Today, a look at Veeam Endpoint Backup, free. 1.5 arrived yesterday, and I blogged about it a little. And when you open up the user interface for Veeam Endpoint Backup, you get this. Now, the update tab is not quite ready yet. 1.1 is still showing as current. So that's okay. Just go back to the article, click the download link, and we'll manually grab it. Now, unlike past versions, you will notice the download buttons over here. So notice I'm logged in. If you don't already have an account, you may be prompted to create an account or get yourself some credentials. Okay, the 197 meg download is done. If I open it, it opens up the zip. And if I double click the EXE, there we go. And now the user interface came up. Notice it said stopping services and the tray icon disappeared. So it's handling the upgrade uh, smoothly so far. Now we just wait it out. Okay, it's about a couple minutes later. And I have other videos that focus on all the functionality, including recovery. So yes, it's very important to create the recovery media. But in my case, I'm actually going to do that later. Because uh, I already have recovery media created from another test I did last night. So we're good there. All right, so the product is installed. We double click here. And now at the beginning of the video, remember I was at 1.1. Now if we go to the update tab, we're at 1.5. And of course it should show there's no new updates. All right, status. This is a very beefy machine, let me explain. Okay, 1.8 terabytes of data, whoa, right? So it's gonna take a little while, 36 gig was the last backup, um, and the machine offline for a couple of days. And this is where we're gonna see the new features in version 1.5, specifically email alerting and USB ejection. So here we go, entire computer, local storage, same E drive I've been using. I've got up to 60 days saved, so it looks like I cranked it up from the default of 15, uh, 14 days, I think it is. Okay, just hit next. And the schedule, oh, that's fine. We've got the eject feature turned on. Okay, that's done. How about settings? Email notifications. Now I already know from one other test I did, uh, I didn't get the auto settings working for this particular internet provider, my local internet provider, so I'm just gonna do manual config. Okay, that worked. So we're now gonna see the drive letters, you know, enumerated there and uh, the D drive will show up as I attach it. Or E drive in my case, excuse me. And uh, it's taken really long. There we go, it did show up. And there we go. Backup automatically started without me doing anything. So now the most interesting part of this video will be, how does it look when I'm all done? Well, it finished while I was busy doing something else, but uh, good news. Now I don't see that it logged the ejection, but yeah, the drive disappeared, so that's cool. So now I'm going to actually, instead of removing the physical Ethernet, uh, USB 3 cable, I'm just going to power off the drive enclosure and power back on. Let's see if it pops back to life here. So 
So that's interesting. Uh, notice what happened. We heard a tone when I powered it off, and then another one we powered it on. So yeah, it's logically ejecting the drive, where the drive's invisible from devices and drives, and from device manager. But the tone from when I powered off still happened. I don't know, I just find that interesting. All right, so now the drive's been powered on. So what's gonna happen this time around? Okay, it's at 99%. Paying attention this time. Device manager just repainted itself. So some sort of auto refresh happened there, but drive has not ejected yet. Now the drive has ejected. So it's working beautifully. Uh, if we have a look at the details of this job, it's also sent me an email notification. Let's have a look at that email together here. There it is. Okay, I'm recording here near the end when the drive is going to auto eject. And the reason it didn't auto eject is because I had clicked back up now. So I'll emphasize that turning off and turning the enclosure back on, that also in turn kicks off a backup. That's the way to get this auto eject feature working. Using your mouse to click the backup button now does not automatically eject the USB media at the end. So just pointing that out. Okay, we're at the end here. We're at 99%. Soon we're going to see the drive vanish. But we won't hear a tone. And there it goes. So it didn't act quite the same as when I powered off where you hear a tone from Windows, you know, plug and play stuff going on. Now, what if I'm a hacker trying to write software that can find this drive and get CryptoLocker to go on there? Let's start with disk management. The drive should be completely invisible. Sure is likely to be invisible since it's not even showing in device manager. Indeed, that external drive doesn't show there. Is there a way around this? What if we scan for hardware changes? Can it refine the drive and add it? No. How about disk management? Can it get the drive letter to be enumerated and be called drive D again? The answer does appear to be no. The only thing that seems to do it is unplugging where you do hear the sound and then plugging back in. So I'd say this trial, this testing went well. Anyhow, this is a step forward in the right direction if someone's particularly prone to infecting their machine with stuff and you can encourage them to attach at least every week or so. Probably a pretty good option to try this auto USB eject feature. So, hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and for visiting tinkertry.com.